Welcome back, my CRA bays. I know it's been over a month. A lot has occurred in my life. Over a month. <laughs> I just had a birthday. I just went to LA. I had some business ordeals I had to take care of. And, you know, so life was lifing per usual. So let's just get started. So if you saw the title, basically this video is gonna be about five things to consider when basically looking or speaking with the talent acquisition or a recruiter or just overall when you're looking into certain companies. Um, and just things to think about, you know, um, because you kinda, you kinda wanna have an idea of what you want going in to the process as opposed to just like well you know whatever they throw me i'm gonna accept you know you don't necessarily have to accept any and everything just because you're a new cra um so these are these are a few things to to consider and so so stay tuned for the next couple of clips so the first thing is work-life balance work-life balance a question i would ask the recruiter or the talent acquisition um team member, I would ask them, does this company honor work-life balance? Is that a part of the culture of the company? Um, that to me is always a really good question to ask because if there is no work-life balance, it will make your life a whole hell of a lot harder. If they're requiring a lot and not offering enough, um, it kind of just, you know, and sometimes, you know, money isn't everything. So even when they are offering a lot, sometimes that means they're requiring you to do a lot. So you kind of have to figure out like what makes sense to you. Are you a mom? Are you a wife? Are you a husband? Are you a dad? Are you a single parent? Um, are you just, a, you know, a young millennial trying to figure life out? Or is this not your only I thing that you want to be in life? Do you have other side hustles that you want to Put your energy into if these are all if these sound like you then you want to make sure that you consider work-life balance as a part of the culture of the company and number two i would say would be salary so instead of letting them know though because the the recruiter might ask you something like so what kind of salary are you looking for if you want to tell them how much you're getting paid now you can i don't recommend it and I also don't recommend telling them the range or a number. I recommend you asking them, what is the budget for this position? What is the company offering for this position? And then go based off that. Like if it's a number, cause you never know, like you might lowball yourself just off of the strength of like, Cause you didn't know, you didn't know this company was offering 125 for the position. And now you over here saying I could go for 80. That's not fair. And that's not right. And if you're going to go for 80, they're not, sometimes they're not even going to tell you. They're not going to tell you that like, well, that's, that's below budget, but you know, let's, let's bring two of our, two, two people who are expecting 80, $80,000 in, you know what I'm saying? When they could really probably uh, 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 pay you 160 you never know you know what I'm saying so most certainly consider that that is something to consider um, and remember like your wordplay is everything so sometimes some recruiters can like trip you up on questions sometimes interview questions can trip you up um, but just remember how I said to state that like ask for what the budget is for this position what is the range what it what is the range that the that the that the company is offering and then you see if that makes sense for your life another thing you want to consider is what model is this company using are they using an fsp model or an fs model so sometimes some companies use both so an fsp model is a functional service provision and then the fs model is my understanding is a is a full service so for instance, like when you're on an FSP, you might only be working, you well not might, but you only will be working with one, one pharma company. When you're on a full service, you might have 
one oncology study from one company and then another kidney study from another company. Um, so it's a lot more with the FS model, it's a, probably a lot more SOPs to remember. Um, a, this a, the training might be more, I've never done an FS model, but to my understanding, I think the training might be a little bit more extensive because it's like you have to learn basically two different companies or however many studies you have, how, however many protocols you have, you have to learn all of their ins and outs, right? Um, and then with the FSP model, you're more so focused on the one company. You know, there you, you have all the contacts. It's easier to remember. Um, you might have two or three studies on that one FSP model. Um, but you don't have to worry about a thousand SOPs, you know, and those are SOPs are standing operating procedures that just basically outlines, um, for instance, like the company's like policies on certain things, right? So for anyone who's who's new, who is unaware of what SOPs or what SOP stands Another for. thing I wanted to note with the two models is that with the FSP model, it's harder to grow, right? Because basically it's kind of like behind the scenes, you're being hired on as like a long-term contract worker. So even though, you know, you might see a company that might do like a 12 year contract, this is more say for instance, on the backside that you don't know about, might be like a three year contract that is paying you out to be on this FSP model. So the growth to either become a senior CRA or to become a lead or all these other things, like there might not be these positions available because of how the model is structured. Now in an FS model, it's easier to like, to possibly grow. There's more room and potential for growth because there's a lot more positions, a lot more companies. It's just, there's just more going on there. If anybody else has any input in the FS model and the FSP model, feel free to and you know put it down in the in the caption, not not the caption, sorry, the comments below. And um, let's get a discussion started. Like if anything, I might make another video because I feel like I'm learning more about the models now, and I feel as though there's a lot more there's a lot more things to dive into regarding these models. Um, and because they play such a pivotal role, such an important, you know what I'm saying, role in like your position at whatever company you're at. It's like sometimes people don't think about people more so just like, I just want a job. Like, I just want a job that pays good. You know what I mean? But um, these are things to consider. Next thing now, tip number four, benefits offered by the company. You have to think about what you want. Do you want quarterly bonuses? and annual bonuses and unlimited PTO um, and a certain company for the health insurance. Are these things that you're thinking about? Um, these are things you need to consider, especially like if you're a parent and you know, if you're the sole parent who pays for the health insurance, like do you want, find out if the company uses Aetna, United, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, like these are things you wanna consider. These bonuses, are they on are they on like performance rates or are they more so on that the company just does quarterly bonuses as like a courtesy and a thank you for their staff to help retain staff? Like you you really want to think about these things. Um PTO, sick days, like what does that look like? What do these packages look like? Really dive into the packages of the company and see if it fits and suits your life. These are things that like, when I first started, I wasn't very concerned about because I just really wanted to get my feet wet. And so if you're just starting off, I understand you not really paying close attention to that. But if you're like, if, you're, if you've been doing this for about a year or two, I think this is about the time that you need to start reevaluating those benefit packages that your company is offering you because you want to get the best bang for your buck. You want to get, you want to be a part of a company that believes in the same things that you believe in and that offers the things that you need for your personal life. Lastly, you want to find out if there is an on-site or remote visit quota required by the company. Are there any quotas for travel? What is the percentage of travel? Is it 70 to 90 or is it 50 and under? You have to figure out what suits your life. Every CRA is not doing the same thing. Every CRA does not have the same life. You have to figure out, are you gonna be regional? 
or are they going to have you traveling everywhere these are things that you really need to consider because some companies will have you regional but then have you spread across a multitude of different kinds of studies under different therapeutic umbrellas or are you going to be regional in a sense where you only are under one therapeutic umbrella but that's typically probably if you're a part of an fsp um and you're you know and you're traveling locally or are you gonna be traveling around the country? These are things you need to ask. These are things that you need to look into. These are things that you also have to figure out which one of these situations makes sense for my life. Um, because like I can only say for me, I don't want to travel 70% of the time. I don't want to be, and anybody who watched any of my previous videos, y'all know. Y'all know I do not want to travel far. I don't want to travel long. I don't want to be there for an extended period of time. I don't even really necessarily like quotas per se. Um, I like an and or, like if it's like five, maybe a month, or like versus like eight days on site or five reports, like depending on what, you know what I'm saying? Every company is different. Um, but for me, I don't intend to do like too much or overexert myself. Like traveling 70 to 90% of the time is really hard. It is very hard, especially like if you're not in the swing of already doing that, jumping into doing that is very, very difficult. So things to consider, things, these are only things to consider. I'm not giving you direct advice on what to do with your life. I'm just giving you ideas and things to ponder on in your like interview process in your job hunts you know just think about these things all right so those wrap up my tips for today um i'm probably going to try to record some more videos for you guys um i hope this was helpful for one um i miss y'all i miss y'all I did like I miss seeing the comments pop up on my phone I miss like people reaching out asking for help and being able to offer said help um, I'm definitely gonna try to now be I'm trying this being more you know consistent but you know like it's only so much you know only, it's only so much I could promise when life has like a lot of other priorities but you know I can only focus on the now and you know fix things for the future so hopefully you know moving forward we will have a better schedule you know lined up for you guys to get some more videos and i'm gonna record some more videos for you guys today so that i can um put them out you know at a reasonable time point so i'm not leaving you guys hanging for five weeks at a time right so one i want to thank you i want to thank all of the returning subscribers i want to thank you for all the new subscribers because when i just checked i saw a little over 700 subscribers wow wow <laughs> thank you for me that's a big deal i cannot believe that the community is growing like this i honestly cannot because sometimes like you know and that's what honestly keeps me going is just seeing that like there are people out there who want help and people out there who want to be entertained or whatever the case is any way that i can you know offer a bit of myself to you guys i'm here for it um so please remember to comment like and subscribe i appreciate you guys so much um tell a friend um <laughs> and just make sure that you stay locked in with this community i appreciate you guys so stay tuned for the next video bye it's something about the way you stare too much i know that i know